going to hand over to, the, to uh, Rolf Larsen, uh, the Chief Executive of Cloud Names, uh, for the next presentation, which will be taking a look at the detail of how to go through the application process. Rolf has been involved in the internet for 20 years, uh, or over 20 years, which probably makes him one of the most experienced internet people in this room. I don't know if anybody else lays claim to longer than that. Oh, congratulations, sir. Um, uh, Rolf uh, is an active member of the registrar constituency in ICANN, and so from that angle has been involved in the development of the guidebook. He's no, also... Uh, no? The, no, it was in the development of ICANN in the beginning. Oh, in the development of so ICANN Many, many, many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> right. And has also um, started up one of the largest ISPs in, in uh, Norway. So with that, um, I'd like to hand over to you, Rolf, uh, for you. your presentation. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through um, the discussion of uh, applying for a TLD. And I'm certainly not going to manage to cover everything uh, in this sort of uh, session. Um, but uh, looking at this from a you know, sort of a, an applicant's uh, perspective and, uh, and also the focus in, in this uh, seminar is uh, brand uh, owners uh, and how they would uh, view um, um, applying for a TLD. Um, now the brand owners already um, look at a lot of domain names. Uh, they have been doing that for many years and, and they're protecting their names across a, a whole lot of uh, TLDs and, uh, and CC TLDs as well as they're protecting in Twitter names and Facebook names, etc. cetera. So um, when this uh, comes up, uh, a TLD, um, many brand owners have sort of the first look at this is, you know, it's another domain name. And look at the price. I mean, you know, it's enormous. What are they thinking? <laughs> it's, um, it's certainly um, it's an expensive uh, thing to do. And, and uh, many don't really know what is the top level domain. You know, what, what it actually does for uh, the brand name, or can do. Um, and uh, I think once you um, go through that learning uh, phase, then you'll see that uh, applying for, for this means, you know, very much close to applying for um, a global trademark registration. Because this is as close as you can come to, to that. Um, and um, uh, as brand owners are quite you know, aware of, of protecting their names, this uh, is something that they really should uh, care for, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so when, um, when a company has decided uh, that yes, we, we will pursue um, you know, a top level name, um, then of course you have to decide on what, what name to apply for. Might be a company name, might be something else, product or, or service name. Um, and uh, when you decide on that name, you also need to validate, can I apply for this name? You know, will this be able to be registered at uh, uh, a point? Uh, and uh, you, know, you sort of need to go through all the requirements for those names and, and make sure that you have that, done that validation before you um, uh, go through the rest of the work, which is to, to fulfill the application and, and, uh, and go ahead. Uh, now, becoming um, a registry, um, which you will be as an applicant for a top-level domain, um, it's, a, it's a big undertaking. And, um, uh, and there's a natural question about, you know, should I, should us, you know, the big company uh, that I represent do this ourselves or should we outsource it? And uh, the, the, this question goes not only for the application itself, because the application uh, work will require uh, expert um, people to, to uh, go through. But, uh, but all the technical requirements and all the running operation of uh, being a registry um, is certainly something that, uh, that uh, every applicant needs to, to look into, you know, whether or not they would dare to do that themselves. And I think that, uh, um, that the scale of, uh, of running registries um, will never be big enough for any company um, uh, other than the big registry operators 
uh, to do that kind of work. So outsourcing is sort of the natural choice, uh, in my opinion, for, uh, for all brand owners, and certainly also cheaper. Um, once you uh, have chosen uh, step two, you have, um, you have to gather information. Because uh, this guidebook, as we've been talking about, um, uh, and uh, the application itself, uh, the 50 questions that you need to, to make answers for, um, is quite extensive. And, and it requires uh, information gathering across your, your company. So this is a big, big undertaking. And, uh, and normally, uh, brand owners would uh, use um, uh, consultants to help them with uh, with gathering this information and and um, and helping them with uh, writing up the application. And uh, of course, uh, you need to register with uh, with ICANN um, and submit the application before the end of the application um, period, uh, which you know runs me back to the same dates as you've been seeing a few times by now. Um, and um, we're already one month into the three month of, uh, of the application period. So uh, it's not much uh, left. It's uh, about six weeks until um, you have to have registered with, um, with, uh, with ICANN in order to submit by 12th of April. And as you heard, um, the 1st of May is when all the sort of the official information in your ap uh, application will be published. So there's a lot of um, information in, in the, the application that will be official to, for anybody to see. And, and that will come out on the 1st of May. Um, just to look a little bit at what, what can you um, uh, apply for. Uh, certainly your, your brand name or, um, or even uh, cities and regions. Um, generics, I mean, there's um, one of the big reasons to do this uh, new program is the lack of namespace, certainly in the, uh, on the generics uh, side. Um, you know, with uh, more than 100 million uh, domain registrations under .com, the namespace uh, for people who want to register a name that has a global aspect to it. Um, is uh, is not uh, the, the options are not so many uh, anymore, um, and communities there will be uh, possible to register names for for communities as well. So these are the the options out there. We'll be focusing uh, on the options for uh, the brand owners, but first to talk a little bit about what do we mean <coughs> with a dot brand. Because that uh, expression uh, you have probably heard many times, and we use it a lot. Um, and um, it's not a definitive um, uh, rule for what is a dot brand. I mean, ICANN uh, uh, doesn't have it, and, uh, and um, uh, certainly it's not um, anything in the, in the um, uh, application itself that implies that there is a, is a category called dot brand. Uh, so cloud names, uh, who helps customers getting uh, a brand name and, and operating it, we, we have made our own definition of what is a dot brand. Uh, and that's our definition, and, uh, and uh, as long as you go by uh, our application system, um, uh, it will be certain uh, restrictions to, uh, to um, a TLD like this. Um, and um, we think that brand owners, most brand owners, wouldn't be in the, um, in the business of selling domain names. So that, um, that is certainly one of our restrictions, is that you, know, you cannot sell uh, domain names under your dot .brand. You can uh, give them away, uh, but you must keep the ownership to the brand uh, itself. So it's a sort of exclusive ownership to, to the brand. Um, and uh, by, uh, by doing this uh, and keeping the control uh, of this uh, TLD under the brand owner um, gives uh, the possibility of an easier uh, application uh, process. And I'll come back to that. 
Um, as a brand owner, um, as I said, you certainly look at um, probably securing your company name, your strong brand names. Uh, could be product or services that you, uh, you want to secure. Um, I've run up some examples here. Uh, we have uh, run across many, uh, many brand owners that also wants to look into securing their industry terms. You know, and, uh, and uh, that uh, could be quite powerful for a brand, uh, for a big brand, to also secure its industry uh, and uh, make sure that they control much of the namespace um, implied by that. Uh, now there are uh, systems to relate to when it comes to applying. And um, uh, we've been talking about ICANN system, which is TAS, TLD application system. Um, and that's the system where you need to have uh, registered an account before uh, the end of, uh, of March, uh, 29th of March, um, in order to uh, submit an application. Uh, Cloud names ourselves, we have also uh, created an application system, and it's not uh, instead of uh, ICANN's uh, system, but uh, it's something uh, that um, uh, applicants that um, goes through us will use uh, in order to uh, create the full application um, that later on goes into uh, ICANN's task. And we have created this um, mainly because uh, it's, um, it's such a big undertaking to create these applications. But if you make um, strict rules, um, uh, you can um, generalize what a brand, uh, dot brand application looks like. And that's what we have uh, been doing, uh, is to make sure that um, you can, uh, without uh, expertise, uh, create one of these applications um, and the expertise lies then within the application system. I'll come back to more about that. Uh, now if you look at applying, uh, if you decided today that you're going to apply for a TLD, um, most likely if you already have a, um, some consultants to, to help you with the, with the application, it's going to take you four to six weeks. Some will even say that it takes more time than that because you know, it's all the information gathering um, and all the decisions to be taken. Um, so, uh, and uh, lots of meetings, uh, etc. So that's, uh, that's uh, basically what, um, what uh, it, it takes when you, when you first start on uh, after, after deciding. Um, and you do need expertise. This is probably not something that uh, you already have in internally in your company, the expertise of writing this uh, application, being it legal, being it a policy or otherwise. So um, the next thing is, um, as we talked about, you need to, to do a string validation. Um, uh, in, in our service, that's a, an a, a automatic feature, so it, uh, it does uh, check the string uh, that you have automatically. Um, and um, you also need to make sure that you, you um, uh, run a, a string assessment in terms of you know, what are the risks that this name could uh, have, uh, have issues with it. Of course, when you apply for TLD, you can also apply for many, and the support for that is uh, in ICANN system as well as, uh, as ours. Uh, what we have um, uh, made sure to, to build uh, solutions for is to have uh, the application and the information that uh, you as an uh, applicant uh, submit to be uh, thoroughly gone through by uh, third parties. So, and we have our own uh, experts uh, going through it, as well as we have um, our legal partner, DLA Piper, uh, to go through uh, all, the, um, uh, all the information that, uh, that uh, an applicant submits. Because you get one chance. <laughs> you, you can't edit it after you have sent it in, then it's, then it's done. 
Our system, I just put up some pictures of it, is a very easy to use um, uh, service um, where uh, it does your validation. You can add your brands and you have easy to use forms. As I said, you can use this application system without uh, any expertise. So that means that the management in any big uh, brand owner can, uh, can deal with this themselves quite quickly. Um, once you're in the uh, system, you can uh, you know, have an overview of where are you in, in terms of um, uh, finishing your application. And, uh, and many can take part in, in um, uh, delivering all the information needed. And as I said, we, we also have this system uh, in, um, in the background, our back office, uh, where we can go in and, and validate uh, information supplied by, by the applicants. Um, and, uh, and make sure that uh, it's correct before, uh, in the end, it's submitted to, to ICANN. Now, this system generates um, you know, a 200-page um, application uh, that's in pure text in addition to, to uh, attached uh, documents. So, um, so if you did all this work um, by yourself and with consultants, it's, uh, it would take a lot of time, but much of the information here is already pre-written by us, and the rest is generated um, from your input as an applicant. And that's, uh, as I said, that's possible because we, we have categorized and generalized um, the dot brand uh, definition. Uh, the information that you need to come up with in, in our system is, um, is fairly straightforward uh, stuff. It's uh, information about your company, about your, uh, your um, uh, directors, etc. just uh, entity information. Um, and um, it's normal financial statements and, and uh, those things that are uh, required also by, by ICANN. But um, the rest uh, that TAS is requiring, as I said, is, uh, uh, is uh, generated by, uh, by our service. And um, as you can see, it's a, it's a long list. Uh, it's 50 questions. Um, and uh, some of them are quite tough to answer. Some are important to answer very correctly because it's, uh, uh, you get uh, uh, points to how, how well you have answered the different questions. And you need a certain amount of points to make sure that your application will go through and be successful. Um, and uh, if you want to learn about uh, these, uh, the ap applicant guidebook and, and about the process of applying uh, through TAS, I, uh, I can recommend uh, looking at the ICANN's uh, website. They have a lot of good uh, information there, videos, and, and uh, um, yeah, easy, easy way to, to, to learn about it. But as I said, it's maybe late to, to start looking at this now. Um, because we're ending um, or near ending of the, of the first uh, application round. Um, one thing about, uh, about uh, the first application round is it's going not to be um, that um, big. Uh, it's not going to be uh, compared to the next, um, the next application round. Uh, which probably will uh, have maybe 10 times as many applicants, in our opinion, than round one. And much of the reason is uh, because companies haven't had um, probably enough time to evaluate this, or, uh, or they haven't really grasped um, the importance of applying. Uh, and I think that many companies will, you know, after round one, when they see the evidence of round one, then understand the importance of it, then believe that a change has happened uh, to the namespace uh, on the internet. Many need that uh, to go uh, through before they, um, they can uh, believe in it. So, 
Uh, and finally, when, uh, when you have submitted an application, um, uh, I'm uh, Gid Dela Piper talked quite a bit about this, but um, uh, for, for brand owners, if you have a straightforward application uh, and you don't have uh, any disputes, uh, you, you probably have uh, a successful uh, result within nine months. Um, and if you don't, then, uh, then you uh, might end up uh, competing with others about your name. Um, it could be more expensive than the initial uh, cost that you are looking at. Um, and hopefully uh, you have a more straightforward name than that. But, um, but uh, for many, it can also be quite um, uh, important to um, take part in a, in a competition about the name, uh, seeing as uh, many have um, you know, paid a lot for their brand name so far, uh, secured it at so many areas, and this is the top, this is the top area, and, uh, and if you think about it in the future, it's going to be uh, regarded as you know, the, the only real, global, strong brand name uh, that you can have online is the TLD. And, and you need to get into that kind of thinking before you understand how important it is to, to secure uh, your trademark and, and your brand name now. Um, so I guess that's, um, that's it for me from, uh, about the application thank process. You very, yeah? Rolf, thank you very much for that uh, very clear presentation about the application process. So, um, often when you get presentations about a process, your heart sinks because it's, you know, lots and lots of uh, factual stuff, but this was done in such an engaging and visual way. And uh, I think it's, it might just be an example of some of, the, some of the innovation that is generated when there is such a, a fundamental change in a market, uh, a service like Cloud Names. Who knew that this was actually a business model? And, uh, uh, and yet, when you look at the application guidebook and the 50 questions, it's obviously uh, such a, a, a logical progression. So thank you very much, and uh, congratulations on that. Thank you.